Okay, so hello and welcome to uh, Math 126, which is Applied Statistics for the Winter uh, 2020 session. Um, my name is Mike Deal, and I will be your uh, professor through this uh, quick, <laughs> quick course uh, in statistics. Um, this video is mostly just to get you oriented with the course and get you set up and ready to go with the um, the ebook and homework system that we'll be using and just to sort of show you where everything uh, is that you'll need for um, for the semester and to uh, to get you ready to go so that you can begin the course uh, really as soon as you finish watching this video so um, I'm just going to sort of take you through three three main things um, one our canvas page which is what we're currently looking at on the screen here uh, one will be the homework and ebook uh, system and then the uh, other, the third is the uh, syllabus for the course, um, which is maybe where I'll start. So if you're on Canvas, which I'm sure I think you are, to watch this video, um, if you want to click on the syllabus, oh, I should say, um, the the Canvas page that I think is the most useful for you to be on, um, sort of as your home page, which I think you can sort of set as your home page, is modules. So if you click on sort of as soon as you get into our course page. If you click on modules, you'll see, you know, roughly speaking, something that hopefully looks like this. Um, and this is, I think, the, probably the best format to always be coming into the course or coming into the Canvas page um, with, since the course itself is laid out um, in, in modules. So anyway, uh, but the first thing you see here um, is the syllabus. So if you want to click on that, you can open it if you want to uh, look through it while I uh, show it to you. Um, <clears throat> So of course, uh, the, this is our this is our course and our time frame. So uh, this is a three credit course um, condensed to what I guess that would be about three weeks or so, or maybe a little, actually a little less than three weeks, um, which of course means it's a very um, a very much accelerated sort of rapid fire course. Um, it, but it is three credits, uh, three you know three full credits. So we do. Or we will be meeting the hourly requirements for for, for the uh, for the course, which uh, I think is about 135 hours. So um, you can sort of do the math there uh, that that means this is almost a sort of full time job uh, in terms of a course um, if you're completed with you know within the bounds of the actual semester here. So, but I'll say a little bit more about that as we get uh, uh, through this. Um, <clears throat> so uh, so this is me. Um, th this is my. 13th year at Endicott. I'm uh, a professor in the math and computer science department in the uh, in the day school, I guess you, you would say. Um, so of course I do actually have an office and office phone number and all of that stuff, but since it's winter break um, for me as much as it is for um, uh, for most of the students, uh, I don't think you'll find me uh, in person at all uh, during the semester. Um, but please do feel free to email me if you have any questions. Of course, my email address is right there. I'll send you some emails as well, so you'll certainly have um, uh, uh, ample opportunity to, to email me if you need anything. You can also contact me through Canvas. Um, maybe some of you know that whatever Canvas message or whatever, it's, uh, whatever it says, uh, that's fine. That gets funneled right into email as well, so feel free to contact me either in either of those formats. Um, the course itself, uh, you know, this is sort of an official course description, but I'll just say it's a typical introduc introduction to statistics course. There's no real knowledge of anything that has to do with statistics, um, you know, assumed, so there's no actual prerequisite. I will always just sort of throw out there that in general, I guess there is sort of a prerequisite just of, well, you're, you know, in college, so You've, you've successfully completed many, many math courses in your lives um, uh, that hopefully included things like basic uh, algebra and things like that, which we will lightly use. I mean, probably not really even algebra, just general arithmetic skills of, you know, adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing, and which we won't even do a whole lot of computation ourselves. We'll be using um, technology to do that for us, but... Um, just general sort of math literacy, I guess I would say, is the is the prerequisite. Um, <clears throat> the topics covered are are sort of listed down here in the topical outline. Some of these maybe maybe you know what a mean and a median uh, might be, but uh, probably a lot of this is unfamiliar at this point, which is fine. 
Uh, but this is a fairly traditional course. If you you know know someone who's taken this course at another school or in some other format, um, you know they're probably more or less doing these topics. So, um, so it's a pretty reasonable treatment of the basics of statistics. I should say, you know, where does this course sort of fit in with perhaps your lives and or um, a degree progress? Um, you know, in lives, I think it's reasonable to to say that statistics are very much a part of our everyday lives. I think we hear probably a statistic just about every day, um, and probably depending on what you might do um, for work or elsewhere, it may be even more often than that. So, um, so there's certainly a plenty of need to understand statistics from a basic perspective. Anyway, and this course should hopefully give that to you. Um, from a just you know degree progress and other courses that you might uh, um, that you might find these useful for probably senior thesis is probably the most uh, common use of a course like this uh, maybe research methods or if your major has a research methods type course which is sort of like a pre thesis course um, those would all be things that this course would come uh, th this course would come before any of those sorts of courses so this is sort of a primer or a basic intro to statistics as the name suggests um, and there's certainly much 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 more to the story after this um, but that those would be that would be covered in in future courses so anyway all of that just to say this is a um, your your sort of typical intro to stats um, course um, and in terms of math like I said before uh, just some basic uh, numeracy I know that I often get the emails and maybe you will be tempted to send me an email at the beginning of the semester saying, hi, I'm so-and-so, and I've always been really bad at math. I, I, you know, I would encourage you to not do that, mostly just because it doesn't help you, and it certainly doesn't help me to know, <laughs> to, to know that about you. The course is completely laid out and posted right now, so there isn't like there's anything that I'm going to be doing differently by knowing that you have, ha have had some issues or difficulties with math. And I think when you sort of embrace that, it does lead you into a sort of self-fulfilling prophecy where you say, well, I know I'm, I'm bad at math, so I'm going to be bad at this course. I mean, it's a terrible way to, it's a terrible attitude to have going into something just in life in general to be thinking, well, this is probably going to be really awful. I mean, maybe it will be, but hopefully it won't be. And I think you, your best your best bet is to just sort of approach this like a new thing and even though like it, I'm sure you've taken a dozen math courses in your in your life and maybe they've all been awful uh, for you uh, that doesn't mean that this one has to be so I would really encourage you to not kind of lean on the well I've always been bad at this and you know I've always struggled with this and you know try to try to not let that be your your guiding principle because this is a course that Yes, people do fail this course, and so this is definitely not, uh, you know, any sort of uh, of a guarantee that you're not going to uh, perhaps have some issues at times. But um, I think it's better to not think about that ahead of time and and just try to sort of say, well, this is a new thing and a new course. I will say that um, we won't do a whole lot of math. I think when you say the word math, you have images of algebra and and I don't know other kinds of arithmetic sorts of things and and I say that just to say that we're going to be using technology to do a lot of the arithmetic and computations so you're not going to be doing you know long division problems or anything weird like that um, the mathiness I guess in the course is more of a using the uh, computations that technology does for us and interpreting them and all of that that's the that's the hard part or I would say that's the challenge or the thing that we're going to spend our time with not so much the nuts and bolts of computing this and computing that that's going to mostly all be very easy because it's going to all be done with technology so um, so I think some people I, I will say uh, as a last word on this um, I've definitely had people who've said you know I've always been bad at math because you've People feel the need to tell me that, um, but then say, you know, but this course was actually pretty good, or this, you know, or I didn't hate this course, maybe is probably the, the more common reaction, which, you know, is at the end of the semester, of course, where it's easier to say that once you know you've uh, passed it. But <clears throat> um, anyway, all of that is to say, uh, hopefully have a, have a positive attitude about this, and, and um, even if you deep down feel like this is probably going to be awful, um, Try to sort of suppress that, and uh, and hopefully it won't be. 
Uh, all right, so um, the uh, textbook for the course, we'll be using an ebook, which is bundled with an online homework system, which I'll show you um, how to sign up for that in a, in a few minutes. Um, the book is, of course, has a title, Elementary Statistics Picturing the World. Um, the, but it's bundled into a homework system that's collectively all known as MyStatLab, uh, which is a product of uh, Pearson, which is a, a large textbook conglomerate, I guess. Um, so you may have a Pearson account from if you've taken some other online courses. Um, so if you do, great. If you don't, it's fine. Um, I will show you how to sign up for access to both this MyStatLab package and also uh, that has the, and that also has the ebook bundled in with it. Uh, you're mostly going to be using this MyStatLab to uh, that's where you're going to complete the online homework assignments. Uh, so you're going to probably mostly be associating that with, oh, that's where I go to do homework. Um, but that is also where the, the uh, textbook is going to be. So I'll show you how to sign up for that uh, in a few minutes. Um, <clears throat> the uh, other materials or other things that you probably want to have for the course. Um, so two things, um, or I guess a few things here. Uh, one, um, for computations, we're going to be using Excel, Microsoft Excel. Um, which most people have access to, or I should say most computers are bundled with uh, Microsoft Office, um, which includes uh, uh, Microsoft Excel. Um, so hopefully you have access to this, to, to Microsoft Excel. If you have any version of Excel, uh, if you're on a Windows machine, if you're on a Mac, that's, uh, that's fine. If you have an older version of Excel or a newer version of Excel, they're all fine. They will all work just fine for this uh, for this course. The only version or the only kind of Excel that I think doesn't work uh, for the course is you can't do it on a you can't um, uh, uh, use Excel on like an iPad or um, maybe even a Chromebook. I'm not sure if that works, but you kind of need a you need a computer. You need a laptop, um, not just a, a you know a like a um, an iPad, right, or something like an iPad. Because you need to be able to um, have a mouse, you know. You need to be able to be able to to select things and highlight things. And um, anyway, so you just you can't really do that on an on an iPad. So, um, but any sort of laptop, PC, you know, uh, computer, PC, whatever you got, if you have Excel on it, you should be just fine. Um, if you don't have Excel on whatever computer you're uh, that you use, um, you may. Uh, decide you want to purchase it. Um, I don't really know exactly how much a standalone Excel is, um, but uh, I would encourage you to, to to buy it if you don't have it. I suppose if you, if this is a very short course, so perhaps maybe you can, if you know someone who has a has a laptop that has it on, has Excel on it, um, you might be able to maybe just borrow it for, for these few weeks. Um, if you have Excel at work, on a work computer, although you going to be spending an awful lot of hours at work not doing work <laughs> if um, if that's how you're, you're doing this. So you probably want to just, you know, make sure, again, make sure you have regular access to Excel. Um, and again, any version should be just fine. Uh, other things you might want to have, um, a notebook I think is actually really important. I think we get kind of tied up, uh, especially in an online course with Lots of computer kinds of things, which yes, that's important. But I think actually this is this is still a math class, so I think a notebook, or at least some paper, you know, a pad of uh, you know, a legal pad of paper or something like that, is actually really useful. And I think you should use paper for two things: one, for taking notes, just like you would in a regular course. Um, I know it's an online course, so you're going to watch lecture videos that you could just rewatch. But I think a lot of learning and retention actually happens when you write. So I would encourage you to take notes, just like you would if this was a traditional in-person course. Um, and then also to do homework problems, which ultimately, yes, you're going to type into um, type your answers into a computer. But you absolutely need to do homework problems and any math problem on paper, because it'd be crazy to try to just do it entirely on a computer, as you probably know. Typing math is like not fun at all. Um, so if you're working out a problem, I mean, unless it's a super super simple problem that you can immediately get the answer to, you probably want to be doing this on paper and then, um, you know, copying your answer into the online uh, homework system.
So anyway, so for those reasons, uh, I think uh, you probably want to have uh, a notebook, and then you may also want a simple calculator for computations. You might even just use the calculators on your cell phone um, or just some basic. You don't have to have a fancy calculator by any means, just something that does addition and subtraction and multiplication and division, and maybe square roots is probably about the most complicated in terms of a, an arithmetic thing that you might want. You can do all of the stuff in Excel, but sometimes if you just want to do a, you know, 7 divided by 3 and then the square root of that, I mean, that's kind of a pain to do in Excel. So you'd probably just be happier with a, a simple calculator. Um, so that's it, I think, for materials and things you might need. Um, the lectures for this course are all going to be posted in Canvas. So while you, I will assign you reading for the first unit in the ebook, for the rest of the units, um, there are lecture, prepared lecture videos in Canvas that I'll show you when we go over there. Um, and those are the videos that you should be watching to learn the, learn the material um, for the course. I, I will say that, uh, let me under, uh, sort of underline that or highlight this, right? These, these are the videos that you should be reading, I'm uh, sorry, be watching. Um, there are some videos that are also part of, that are bundled in with the textbook. And while you're welcome to watch those videos, those are not, uh, those are not prepared by me. Those are actually just prepared by the textbook company. And while they obviously are talking about the same topics that my videos would be talking about, they do approach learning them sometimes in a different way. So I'm not saying don't watch them, but I certainly don't expect you to watch those, those videos, the ones that are part of the homework system. I don't expect you to watch. And in some cases, they actually probably are leading you astray or at least actually kind of they're showing you how to do something, but they're showing you how to do it in a more complicated way. So I'll, I'll point those out when we when we uh, get over there. But uh, but anyway, just just sort of remind yourself, Canvas is where you're going to go to watch the lecture videos every week or every for every um, uh, assignment. Um, and of course, I'll show you those when we uh, head over head over there. Uh, your grade in the course is very simple to compute. Uh, there will be a midterm exam and a final exam, um, and in total that's three quarters of your grade, 75%. And then uh, the uh, six homework assignments you're going to be completing, going to be completing will uh, add up to the uh, other quarter of your grade. So obviously it's a very short course, so there isn't time for you know a million assignments. Um, so it's sort of sweet and simple, I guess, um, that uh, two exams and six homework assignments will, uh, will form your grade in the course. Um, the homework assignments, as I mentioned, um, are in this uh, 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 website or software called My, My Stat Lab. Um, some of the questions that you'll see there are multiple choice or fill in the blanks. So obviously that's pretty self-explanatory for how to answer the question. But a lot of them will be um, numerical computations. So that's what I was mentioning earlier. You're going to do a math problem, um, hopefully on paper, and then you're going to get a new, you know, a number for an answer, and you're going to type that number in. Um, so I will say that the homework system tries to help you a lot. So the homework system um, tries to give you hints or feedback, and it will let you make additional guesses if you're getting the problem wrong. So I'll show you that when we get over there. Um, but I'll say it here. So usually it lets you guess once or twice, and then if you sort of get it wrong or you know it marks it wrong, even then you're still not done because you can request, um, I think it says something like similar problem, it will say on each of these questions. You can ask basically for it to generate a brand new version of the problem that you can then start all over, you know, you can start again. And, and, and if you get it right, and, and it's still before it's due, um, you still get credit for it. So there's lots and lots of options and lots of help um, with the homework. Um, <clears throat> I will say, again, the homework system gives you hints and feedback, but again, it's often going to especially as we get later in the semester, the feedback it's going to give you is to how to solve the problem by hand. So in other words, it's going to have you be using crazy formulas and crazy charts and all this sort of stuff. Please don't click on that. I mean, again, it's, it is telling you the right way to do it, but it's telling you a way that's a hundred times harder than the way that I mix, that I show you in the lecture videos how to do these problems. So. While it's okay to click on them, just sort of don't get too carried away with, oh, but the little hint thing told me I was supposed to. I mean, again, it, it's probably not necessarily the same way that, that I went over it, and I, I promise you the way that we went over it in lecture is probably easier. So 
So I'd say sort of stick stick mostly with that. Um, but there are some hints, and again, sometimes it does give you some good information at, at, at times. So, um, okay. Um, uh, let's see what else. There are some other things in the homework system that you'll see, like it's you know got extra practice problems and quizzes and homework uh, and exams and all kinds of bells and whistles. None of those are required, and you're not getting any points for doing those. But you're welcome to, of course, click on them and do them if you want for extra practice. All right. So these six homework assignments, there are due dates for all of them. Um, I believe the homework system penalizes you 20 or 25 percent. I can't remember uh, a day if it's late. Um, I have to say, please, please, please make sure you complete the homework on time. Um, I promise you there are no exceptions to this rule. There will be no extensions on any assignment for no matter what reason you might have. If your computer crashes, you needed to not wait until the last minute to do it. So um, so I just I say this in this video to tell you, please don't even ask, because there will be no extensions on, on work. You can complete it after it's due, but you will be penalized for that. So, so please do make sure you complete all things by the due dates, which are very clearly laid out in Canvas. <clears throat> um, the exams are going to be administered through Canvas. Um, which uh, hopefully you've taken some Canvas quizzes before. Um, if you haven't, it's no big deal. Uh, but um, that's where you'll go in order to, to take the midterm and the final exams. These are timed, so you do need to study for those exams. In fact, I would say you need to study quite a bit in order to be able to be fresh enough with the material in order to complete the exams in the allotted time. I think the midterm is a two-hour midterm. The finals, I think, three hours. Um, <clears throat> so. Um, but this is all what I was saying earlier about you need to sort of take notes and you need to prepare just like you would for a regular in-person course. Same thing for the exams. I would say you need to study every bit as much as for an exam that you're going to take in class. Um, even though, of course, yes, you can use your notes and use anything on Canvas um, uh, for the exam. Uh, for the most part, that's not all that helpful because, of course, the questions are going to be different than the ones that you've done in homework um, and different than the problems from the lecture, although of course the idea is that if you have understood all of that, you should be fine on the exams, um, but they're not just going to be the same problems with different numbers, right? So um, so it's not as useful to be able to have your notes and whatnot in front of you. Um, but in any case, um, you're, you're welcome though to use whatever you've prepared uh, to help you with the exams. Um, so the last thing I'll say, I think this is uh, the second to last thing I'll say is, um, so this is, as I maybe mentioned a, a minute ago, this is a, a whole three credit course that's condensed into about three weeks, um, which you can do the math. I think there's 135, I think, hours of work that are expected for this course, which if you do it in three weeks, means that's about 40 hours a week, which for most people is a full-time job. So if you have a full-time job that you are working, uh, uh, over these this three week period, while it's certainly still possible to have enough time to do this, I think you should be very aware that in these three weeks, this is going to be a second full time job is is getting through this course. Um, if you start the course on uh, on January, what is our sort of official first day is January sixth. Um, if you begin the course on January sixth, just be aware that in the less than three weeks you're going to be completing at least, you're spending at least 100 hours on this course. So it, if you're working all day, that probably means you're going to come home and, and unfortunately have to sort of get to work on spending at least a few hours every night um, and probably the lion's share of the couple of weekends that are between, the, the, you know, that the semester stretches over um, in order to finish this course. Um, hopefully you're not taking more than one winter session course. If you are, I would just say then you definitely should not also be working because that's an insane amount of time that you'd have to be spending in order to pass two courses in a 16 or 17 day window. Um, so just sort of be careful, I guess, is my, my best advice for this. Um, this is not a 20 or 30 hour course. So Perhaps there are some courses you've taken that, that don't take that much time, and even though they're advertised as taking a long time, you're able to knock them out in, you know, in a day or two, or you know, the equivalent of sort of a few days of full work. Um, I don't think that that's true, I mean, unless you're a statistics expert already. 
um, this is going to take you a lot of time. So just sort of be aware of that. Um, if you do decide you want to switch, um, if you're a Van Loan student, um, you can chat with your advisor um, about um, switching. This course actually runs every term or every semester. So this course runs in, an, in a longer online format in the spring semester. I think I'm actually also teaching it. So it runs in, a, I think it's an eight week period as opposed to a two and a half week period, um, which is a much, much more, more reasonable time frame to kind of spread this out. Um, so if you're kind of having some doubts about, oh gosh, you know, I'm kind of busy during this winter session. I don't know if I have all this time in, in this, you know, then, then maybe reconsider. And if you want to switch, you can chat with your advisor um, and maybe switch into the, uh, the, the spring uh, section. I believe it also runs in person in the spring, like a, a night class, which is also not a bad idea. Uh, it's also spread out over eight weeks instead of uh, two and a half. So, so just sort of be aware um, of how much time you're going to have to spend on this. One thing you can do um, is that hopefully you're not watching this video on January 6th. And hopefully it's December something uh, when you're watching this, or at least early January something, uh, because you can begin the course right now. So or after you're finished with this video, you can begin the course. So I think uh, it's a really, really good idea that to take some time. I know we don't probably really want to be working on this over the holidays, but future you will thank you uh, if you can knock out. I've had a lot of students finish the entire first half of the course and do the midterm by the time the course actually begins. That's actually a really good formula for success because then you have almost three weeks to do the second half of the course. Um, I'll probably say this in email format a few times, the second half of the course is much, much, much harder than the first half of the course. So, which is great. I mean, good in the sense that you get a whole first half and a midterm score in the books that most people do pretty well with. Um, but the second half, it's probably twice as long and twice as hard as the first half. So um, you'll see as I when we look at the assignments that I give you more time for the second half. Um, but uh, you'd you'd be doing yourself a huge favor if you can get as much of the um, first half done uh, before the course begins, or at least you know in the first few days of the course, um, and get sort of a good foundation in there. Um, that would also be a really nice way to um, make the course a little more manageable. So. Okay, I think that's about it for the syllabus. If you do get extended time uh, for testing, uh, please let me know, and I can um, add that into um, into Canvas so that you get time and a half uh, for uh, Canvas exams. Um, please just uh, notify the student success office um, and have them contact me with your documentation. Okay, so I think it's the end of the syllabus. Uh, so I'll come back to Canvas here. Um, and I'll just point to one other um, uh, link that you, if you want to click on, is the second link right here, which is re which are registration instructions for my Stat Lab. So my Stat Lab is the homework system and ebook that we'll be using. So if you click on this, um, it gives you pretty easy to follow step by step instructions for signing up for the um, online homework system and the, and the textbook. Um, these are uh, bundled together. I think the cost is about a hundred and five, maybe 110 bucks, some, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, so if you click on this, it'll tell you how to get signed up. When you log in or sign up to, um, to my stat lab and log into our course, I think your course will, your, the, the um, page you'll be looking at will look something like this at least. Um, yours probably looks a little different because uh, the student view, but, um, but this is my stat lab. So there's a few things in here that I'll show you. Mostly, and there's like a million things in here, so most of this you don't really need to be worried about. But um, one thing you can always certainly click on that's useful is the homework tab on the left here. <clears throat> and this is, of course, uh, a list of all the homework assignments. And there are, like I said, there are six. Um, they sort of have titles, I guess. Uh, and I try to sort of show you what parts of the book um, these come from. There's also due dates for each of these, as you can see here, and these are all of the actual due dates uh, for the semester. And eventually, uh, when you complete them, uh, your scores will appear over here. So if you click on um, any of these assignments, which probably you want to do them in order, but um, I'll just randomly pick maybe this one just for fun, um, you get to um, a page that also has sort of a summary, again, of your, has the due date, 
it says what your current score is, um, and that's uh, and then below you see these these are the actual questions. So obviously this one has I guess 13, uh, 13 questions. And again, unless you're a strange person, you're probably going to start with the first one and you know sort of work through them like this. So if you click on I'll click on question one here. <clears throat> Usually the early questions are sort of conceptual, which often means they tend to be maybe multiple choice or fill in the blank kinds of questions, uh, whereas the latter questions tend to be more um, uh, computational. So, but I'll show you all of that. So of course it has a question. Sometimes there's more than one part to the question, but I think this one just has one. Uh, so it poses the question. And then again, if it's multiple choice, you're gonna obviously pick, uh, uh, pick your answer. And I'll just sort of show you a little bit about uh, that if you pick an answer, and you can, in the lower right corner here, you can say check, which is sort of your way of submitting an answer. So, but if you say check, um, if you get it wrong, if you get it right, it'll show you like a green check mark and say, you know, congratulations or something like that. Um, but if you get it wrong, it often does try to give you a little bit of advice. And like I said, sometimes this advice is helpful and sometimes it isn't. But, um, but the point is, is that it will let you retry the problem or let you know, it'll let you try this again. And say okay I'm gonna try this one maybe which I'm still not getting the answer correct um, which obviously with multiple with multiple choice I mean you know <laughs> I think I get one more check so I mean unless I'm really bad I might eventually be able to maybe get it right All right <clears throat> um, so if you get it right you get a little green check and you can move on to the next question so um, <clears throat> let me just sort of now um, I don't have to necessarily, I mean, I probably will do the questions in order, but if you do need to sort of jump around or skip around, if you click here at the top, uh, you can sort of, again, pull open a screen that's showing you all the questions. As you can see, it's also showing you your progress. So we got the first question right. So we have a little check there. So um, let me just go to a later question that probably is numerical. Yes, OK. Um, <clears throat> So uh, with numerical questions, where here's the question up top here, and this one apparently has three parts, A, B, and C, uh, you're going to have to do a computation for this. And this question is going to involve you using Excel and doing some computation in there. Um, but when you go to an uh, enter your answer, this is, of course, going to be a number. I have no idea what the actual answer is, so I'm just going to guess something random here. Um, so you'll type in, hopefully not a random answer, but the one that you've computed, and you'll say check. And again, sometimes they give you some advice here. A lot of the times, while again, the advice that they're giving you here is works or is true, I've probably showed you an easier way to do this in the lectures. So if you're not getting a right answer, probably go back and not so much follow that advice, but just sort of go back and be like, well, did we do an example like this? And I'm sure we did. Um, but it will let you retry, right? So it'll let me say, okay, maybe it wasn't that. Maybe it was 0.45. Okay, and I'm still not getting this right. Now if I go one more time, <clears throat> so I think three is usually the magic number. So if I get it wrong three times, which I just did, it'll show you the correct answer, and it'll show you your, your most recent answer. I don't think it shows you all of them, but the last one I typed in was 0.35. So it'll show you the right answer, um, which sometimes that's really helpful, sometimes it's not so helpful. In this case, right, I'd be like, well, I don't know, all that tells me is that my answer was wrong. Uh, but sometimes, you know, like if the answer had been point, I did 0.35, if the answer was 0.351 or something awfully close, okay, then it's probably just that you rounded a little too much. So maybe just go back and redo it without rounding so much. Um, and sometimes even just seeing the answer kind of shows you, oh, you know what, I should be doing it this other way instead of the way I was doing it. Um, so if you want to go back, so now I've gotten this problem wrong. So I haven't gotten any points for that. So it still says zero out of one point. Um, but if I finish the problem, or even if I think, I think even if I don't finish the problem, um, <clears throat> if I hit save, so anytime you're sort of ready to kind of jump out and jump back in, if you hit save up here in the upper right corner, <clears throat> um, I'll say yes to this, that I do want to, because I didn't, I didn't actually finish this question, so I'll say yes. Um, and as you can see, it's still saved that I did the first question right, and I didn't do this question, uh, or I got this question wrong. But if I want to, any of the ones that you might get wrong, or even if you just have parts that are wrong, if you click on the question again, first of all, it'll let you continue. So this was still the wrong answer. I guess I need to get all of these parts wrong. Sorry. Let me just get these all wrong. And I will show you that. Uh -huh. <clears throat> okay, so if I finish the question, 
I've gotten all the parts wrong now. And even if you just got some of the parts wrong, um, when you get to the end, you can ask for a similar question. So if I hit similar question right now, it's going to regenerate this whole question with, you know, basically with different numbers. Um, so you do have to redo it. You can't obviously just answer. You can't just be like, oh, hey, they told me the correct answer. I'm just going to type that in next time. It'll be wrong because they're going to change the numbers in the problem. Um, but hopefully you've sort of seen the error of your way and you now know how to do it. So if you click similar question here, it'll give you, a, it'll regenerate this question and give you a whole nother chance. And you can do that as many times as you want. Okay. Uh, but if I, let's say, you know what, I don't know this question. I'm going to still go to the next one. Um, and let's say I keep working and I do some other stuff and I say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm calling it quits for the night. I can still go back in and anything that I got wrong, you can also get a similar question by clicking down here in the lower right corner. Again, so any question that you finished, if you didn't get all the parts right and you're willing to redo it, um, if you say similar question, as you can see, it's still about eggs hatching and all of that stuff, but these numbers are all changed. So, um, but it gives you a fresh new start, a whole nother chance to actually get the question right. If I get it right here, it'll still give me all the credit that, um, that I might uh, have gotten for the problem. Okay, so you can redo questions as, as many times as you want, um, which I think is actually really good and really important for you to be able to do that. So you're not sort of nervous about entering an answer and be like, well, I don't want to an enter this unless I'm sure it's right, because you can just keep redoing them and keep redoing them. So I think that's a good thing. Now, a bad thing is, is if you're kind of abusing that and you're just sort of, let me try five or six random things, and if one of them is right, I'll be like, cool, I'm good. Because you're not, right? I mean, if you are just randomly trying stuff in order to get an answer, I mean, that's not going to work on an exam. And the homework is worth very little in this course. So most of your points and grade will come from your exam performance. So I will say that while I think this unlimited chances and all of this is great in the homework system for your learning, um, do make sure that you're learning and not just doing the, let me get points for this thing. I just want to get these points. Because I promise I've had many people that have an almost 100% homework average in, the, in, in this course, and they fail both exams, and they fail the course. So just because you're getting points on the homework doesn't necessarily mean that you actually know what you're doing. So, so try to make sure you're not just sort of skating through the homework to get points. Um, but not really actually understanding why you're doing what you're doing or you know how to know when will I use this versus something else. Because, um, of course, on the exams, you're only going to get one shot at, uh, at each question, right? So, um, and the last thing I'll say while we're in here with homework is that, as I, as I said a few minutes ago, for most of these problems, um, you're going to hopefully be going, especially the computation ones, not the short, like this first question, which was just a multiple choice thing that you could probably just do. But for a lot of the other ones, like the one that I got wrong, um, there was some Excel work. There was probably some tape, some stuff I should have actually written down uh, about the problem first. So if you're having trouble with a, a computational problem, um, the best thing you can do, first of all, is, is consult the videos, consult the lecture videos. I promise you that I've done examples of just about every single type of question in the homework. A lot of people, students will say, I'm stuck on some problems and you didn't show us in any of the lecture videos how to do them. I promise you that I did. It's just that, yes, okay, maybe it doesn't look exactly like ones from the lectures, but I promise that I've shown you the skills you need in order to do it. So, so go back there, hopefully you can maybe see a connection and mimic what we did, um, or what I did in the lecture videos. But, even, but okay, if you try that and you're still like, I still don't see how to do this problem, the best thing you can do um, is if you can take a picture uh, you know, just on your phone of the, the, the paperwork that you've done, you know, the, the, the scratch work on, on paper that you've done. If that way you can also show me on paper, what do you, if you're using Excel, which you are for most of these problems, um, you know, what have you typed into Excel? It's very hard to type math and it's so much easier just to jot down, it takes you two minutes to jot down on paper, you know, your thought process, what you've tried, what you've typed into Excel, all that stuff is real easy for you to just jot a quick note, you take a quick picture of it, and you email me the picture. I can do a much better job of telling you, oh, you know what, in those five steps you did on that on, on paper, you had four of the five steps right, and the only thing you did wrong was step three, you accidentally, you know, whatever, messed up the square root or something like that. Um, it's way easier for me to help you that way than for you to just be like, I'm stuck on number 17. 
I promise that I have no idea how to help you if you say you're stuck on number 17. The only way I can help you is if you show me what you've done. And I can say, oh, okay, well, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so, so if you do have occasion as you're doing homework um, to not be, if you, if you don't you know, get all the problems and have some questions, the best thing you can do for me and for you is to let me, let me see what you've done um, so that I can sort of hopefully give you some advice and hopefully you're not way off and it's just a, a, small, um, a small issue. Okay, so I think that's it for the homework. So again, that's the homework tab. Um, your scores, as you can see, uh, will populate as you complete the assignments. Um, the scores for the homework assignments, as long as they're here or on that other screen that we looked at, um, so if you click on any one of the assignments, your grade, your current grade is also here for the assignment. As long as whatever that says, I can see that. So whatever this is, hopefully it's 100% by the time you're done, but whatever your grade turns out to be um, on an assignment, as long as it says it here, I will be able to transfer those numbers over into Canvas. So we'll use Canvas as our grade book for the course, um, but it doesn't automatically transfer. So if you finish an assignment um, and you know you got a, a 96 on it or something like that, and you look in Canvas, it's not going to show that you got a 96 on it because it doesn't automatically transfer. So what will happen is that after the due, after the assignment is due, I will go in and I will transfer the grades or the scores over. Okay, so don't freak out if you're like, oh my gosh, I finished this, but I'm not getting points for it. As long as it says it here, or in the in the in the grade book here in um, my math uh, my stat lab, um, you you're getting credit for it. All right, I will eventually switch it over. Um, <clears throat> so okay, so I think that's all I wanted to say about that. So that's um, so that's homework. Um, <clears throat> The other thing that's in my math, uh, my stat lab here that you um, uh, may need or will need, I guess, to get started, is that uh, the ebook, which of course is where all these problems come from, the textbook. Um, I don't know why they didn't just put textbook as one of these many, many, many options, but they didn't for, for whatever reason. Chapter contents is how they call the textbook. So, so if you click on chapter contents um, on your menu on the left here. You now it does more so look like a textbook. Um, you'll see that there's of course chapters here. That if you click on any chapter, I'll click on chapter one here, um, you'll see sections. So section one point one, one point two, one point three, for example. And if you click, <clears throat> and if you click on a section, it takes you to a number of options. So there's um, one thing. These are these videos that I was referring to earlier. These are not the videos. That you should be watch or that you need to watch for the course. These are again, these are just videos that somebody made who published the textbook. Um, you're welcome to watch them if you want, but they're kind of dry. And to be honest, they they don't well anyway. They don't do necessarily a fantastic job of explaining things. I don't think. Um, so so you don't need to worry about those. Uh, if you want to see the ebook though, you'll click on this second link here. So multimedia e-text, as it's as it says there. If you click on this, it should open up a window where you um, can then sort of scroll through the ebook. Okay, so if you click on this, so I'm in section 1.1, and if I click on this, it'll pull up section 1.1. And uh, each of these sections is actually pretty short; it's just I don't know five or six pages. So you can read through just like you would a regular textbook. When you're done with the section 1.1, you click on 1.2. And again, you get the same options. If you click on this e-text, it'll show you the uh, the ebook. Um, so for chapter one, I am ha I am going to have you read the ebook for these three sections, and then you should be equipped from that to be able to do the homework. But for all the other sections and all the other units and all the other homework assignments, um, you don't really need to read the ebook. You're welcome to if you want, right? And again, you know, we're going to be doing chapters one. Uh, two, five, six, and nine. I think um, you you know you're welcome to to look through the ebook, but to be honest, for the most part, I think you shouldn't really need to, and everything that you need should be explained in the lecture videos on Canvas. All right. Um, so I think that's about it for uh, for my stat lab. I don't think there's anything else in here um, to look at. So let me close that. <clears throat> switch over back to Canvas. So the last bit of the video as I'll just show you some things here in Canvas um, and then you should be good to go for uh, for the course. Um, so uh, everything is organized here into units. So you see unit one, unit two, unit three, and so on. 
Um, the exams are also here. The midterm is here, and the final exam is also here. For each of the exams, I'll say if you're well. You should obviously click on this thing called details and instructions for well the details and instructions uh, about each exam. And then uh, the little rocket ship uh, uh, thing down here, this is the actual exam. So you really only wanna, only wanna click on that when you're kind of ready to actually do the exams. Um, <clears throat> so those are the two exams, but the other units, I'm able to just point to unit three, um, usually have uh, four things or at least four things listed. One is just some announcements, which to be honest, I, don't, I think I used to use that a whole lot more often. I don't really use that a whole lot anymore. So probably don't really need to click on that. Um, but the other three things are, are important. So um, one, if you click on video lectures or lecture videos, uh, what you see here are videos, of course. These are the videos that you do, that you absolutely want to watch. So for each unit, you'll see a series of videos. Um, these are YouTube videos, as you can probably tell from the icon. And if you click on them, um, they will play. <coughs> Let me mute myself there. Um, <clears throat> Uh, these will play right here, so if you want to watch them, you know, you could watch them um, right here in Canvas. Um, if you don't really want to watch these in Canvas, um, if you click on the YouTube uh, logo, uh, it'll play it in YouTube. Uh, if you want to go full screen, you can go full screen um, by hitting this. Um, a lot of people do like the captions, um, even if you don't need them. Um, it sometimes is nice just to be able to sort of see what, um, what I'm saying as well, um, which I don't want to necessarily see, see what I'm saying right now, but um, so you're welcome to uh, to turn on uh, any of those features or watch this however you want. Um, for each unit, you'll see there are there's I think several videos for most units. This one only has two, uh, so obviously you'll want to have watched both of them, and they're laid out in the correct order. So watch them in order from top to bottom on the screen here. Um, but for a lot of the other units, there's maybe three, four, five, six videos. Um, just sort of depends on how many sections um, there were. Um, in total, I don't know, it's probably somewhere between two and four or five hours of lecture videos for each unit. Um, this is a sort of shorter unit that there's only two and each of them is only about an hour. Um, so video lectures, that's one thing that you see um, after the first unit. Again, for, for chapter one, you're going to be do, you're going to be reading. Um, but for all the other units, video lectures, video lectures, video lectures and so on, right? So you'll see that's where you're, that's the most important thing here on Canvas. Uh, the second thing that you see um, are slides. Now, of course, the lecture videos, as you saw a second ago, is mostly just me voicing over some PowerPoint slides as we go through some computations. So some people have told me over the years they'd, they'd, like, they'd like to have the slides that I'm uh, talking about. So if you click on this uh, link here in any of the units, these are just the slides that are part of this. So there's nothing new here. This is just the slide version of the videos. Okay. And then the third thing is, is, is homework. Now, if you click on any one of these homework assignments, there isn't actually anything here. In fact, all it says is, hey, watch the videos <laughs> above and then do the homework in my stat lab. So you're not actually completing any homework whatsoever here in Canvas. But the reason why I have it um, in Canvas is for two reasons. One, there's th these are these are real due dates, so this would be the due date for the unit three homework um, <clears throat> is January 11th. So uh, the due dates are here just to sort of help you remember when things are due. Um, and the other reason is that uh, if I I can't enter a grade for you unless I have an assignment in Canvas. So this is also just so that I can actually do that. So um, so nothing to do here for for actual homeworks, but um, more of just sort of like a placeholder kind of thing. Um, I don't know. I think that's probably about it. Like I said, for exams, um, if you click on the details and instructions thing, obviously there's lots of advice and things here. There's also there are also practice problems with some solutions posted for uh, for both the midterm and the for the final. Of course, you should probably do those um, in preparation and and as part of your studying for the exams. Um, the whole course, as you can see, is laid out. Uh, and is active right now, so you are welcome to begin the course as soon as this video wraps up. Um, like I said, for the first unit here, for chapter one, you're going to watch the video that you're watching right now, of course, and then you're going to read in the ebook the first three sections and then go over to the homework tab in my stat lab and complete the homework. 
the first homework assignment is super easy. I mean, the first unit is just sort of an overview of statistics. Um, so the first assignment is super easy. There isn't really much to it, and it's probably not going to take you that long, um, which is fine. Uh, but starting from the second unit, the second and third units, you have to do a lot of computation in Excel. So these will be a little more time consuming, but still hopefully pretty straightforward. And so hopefully the midterm goes OK. Um, unit four is most people will say this is the hardest unit, I guess, in the course. Um, there are lots of videos here. These are the original lecture videos, but then over the years, people have asked for extra help. So I've recorded three more practice videos with lots more problems that you can try. Um, so there's, you know, this is a week that's, I don't know, there's 10 hours probably of videos for you to watch. So, so there's quite a bit here. So this is why I say the second half of the course is going to take you more time. Um, so that's unit four. Unit five is also quite quite uh, long. The homework is, uh, I think this is the longest homework um, in terms of number of, of problems. So give yourself plenty of time for that. And the last unit's actually not too bad. So this, we sort of end on a end on a happy note, I think, that, uh, that this is a little more straightforward. So um, the midterm is uh, based on the first three units. So as soon as you finish unit one, two, and three, you may do the midterm. And then the final exam is not cumulative necessarily. It's really just based on the second half. So it's based on units four, five, mm. and six. Okay, so um, it's sort of really just two half exams or exam for the first half, exam for the second half of the, um, of the semester. Um, <clears throat> the, dates are, the dates that you see here are all um, accurate. Um, so roughly speaking, for the first half of the semester, you have something due almost every other day, or just about every other day. So January 7th for the first, January 9th for the second homework, and January 11th for the third. And then the midterm is due January 13th. So those are every two days. You have something major or something something to do, uh, something is due. And then I tried to space out the second half a little bit more. So from the 13th, we go to the 17th. So you have four days, which again, I mean, this is like a lot of stuff to do. So you may want to hopefully maybe be able to work ahead a little bit. Um, I gave you four days for this as well, since this is a really long assignment. Um, and then three days for this to wrap up and then a couple days to uh, study for the exam and to take the exam. You don't have to wait for the due dates for any of these things. You can do them as much as, as early as you want. So you don't ever have to worry about, oh, can I take the final early? Or so. Of course, you can do anything you want at any time in the whole, for the whole course. Obviously, though, you do need to make sure you complete them by these, by these due dates. Um, <clears throat> so I think that's about it for the uh, intro video here. So, uh, so click on this link here for instructions to signing up for my stat lab. And once you sign up and, and purchase access to the course, you're ready to go. So read chapter one and do the first assignment. And then honestly, I would start right into the next unit. Um, and, and there are, I think, five or six lecture videos for this week, or for this unit. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So obviously that's going to be uh, take you a, um, a serious amount of time probably to get through. Um, <clears throat> so please do get started. Please do um, uh, try to make sure you're mindful. If you do have things going on, you know, a trip or some other, you know, you're going to be out for a few days or something like that. Um, during the semester, just make sure you work ahead so that you don't miss any deadlines. Um, it's, and if you do find yourself sort of behind or, or you know, having trouble um, keeping up with material, um, you know, reach out sooner than later. It's an extremely, if you've never taken a, a January session course, they, they go by very quickly. And even just, you know, a few days of, I just can't do this course. I need two or three days off from, from doing this course. I mean, it's probably that's that's like the equivalent of taking a week or two off in a in a regular semester. So, um, so 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 think about it. If you have any questions about should you take should you stay in it or switch out, um, you know, maybe just chat with your advisor. Um, but I wish you the best of luck. Um, you're welcome to email me if you have any questions. I will check in, you know, uh, periodically, but not not all that often. So. Um, it's sort of up to you to reach out to me if you have um, questions or anything and or if you need uh, any help. And, um, and good luck with the course, and I hope it goes well, and, um, and I will be in touch at some point.